That's that's what you're aiming for. That's right there. Yeah. So I was like, all right, like steady pace. I can hold six minute mile all day. And so then I, I just had a brain fart. And as I'm going, it's like, all right, 16 minute mark. Like finish line is right around the corner in the next two minutes. Not considering like you're doing a 14 minute yeah. mile, yeah. five minute mile, 14 minute mile, five minute mile. Um, and so then I put the pedal down because I was like, yeah, I think, I think I hit all the landmarks that he drew. And then I got to one that I was like, oh, I know, I know definitely where this one was <laughs> yeah. on the map. And we are nowhere close to the finish line. I know which one you're talking about. <laughs> and so I pulled, I throttled way, way back. <laughs> and so I kept you in sight. And then I remember like once, once I like got my heart rate back down, got my legs flushed out got on your tail and I knew no one was even close to either of us behind. So I was like, all right, I'll let you dictate the speed. And I know I was irritated because our goal was like, if you're going to pass someone, pass them at the end. But our other goal was we're going to sprint when it's downhill, we're going to run fast. And if it's flat, we're going to run fast, but uphill, we're going to cruise. Mm -hmm. There's this huge down, it went like downhill into like a big flat. And I was mm -hmm. like, time to push. And I was pushing and I was gaining on you. And I'm like, frick, like, what plan do I follow? <laughs> do I stick with my run fast on the downhill or do I uh, get him behind you? And I was like, oh, maybe I'll pass him and he'll run back in front of me. <laughs> nope. Not until it was too late. <laughs> yeah. Remember we were walking up to the warm-up area and you asked me if I was good at hill runs? <laughs> I was like, I'm better than you. <laughs> I was like, how are you at him? You're like, Amazing. <laughs> 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 I, I, was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> walked right past me. I was like, shit. <laughs> I never knew that until I told him that on the way here. I was <laughs> like, like, really? You said that? I was like, what am I supposed to do? Ah, they're a little weakness of mine. I'm not telling them that. I was just like, I'm fucking great at these. <laughs> I will remember that. At all. <laughs> well, and then, we got, so and then we got to the top, and you're like, Madera, where were you? And I was like, I got nothing. <laughs> I was familiar with a couple names of top five. 
There was Samuel Quant, Jeffrey Adler, Noah Olson, and Justin Medeiros. And, you know, I'm familiar with Noah. I know enough about Jeffrey Adler. I've seen him compete for a little while. Uh, Samuel Quant, familiar with him, been at the games with him. But Justin Medeiros was the, the unknown. And so, you know, you start, you start doing your research on this guy. Of like, all right, how long has he been in the sport? What's his progression been like? What are his strengths? What are his weaknesses? And you find out that like, okay, he's been doing CrossFit for a long time, but he hasn't been competitive for very long. And then you look at, all right, what results does he have that are known? And he really just broke onto the scene at Filthy 150 and he had one hell of a performance. And I think that was back in January. It was su super early in the season, however long it was. And then, and then he, there's nothing on him since then. And you know, you start looking at his age, you know, he's 20, 21 years old. He competed, you know, eight, nine, ten months ago, however long ago it was. And it's like he kind of burst onto the scene then, and then he kind of disappeared. And so there's kind of this fear of like, oh shit, you know, what if he's on this like super nice uphill trajectory and and he's just still on that uphill. Um and like, I don't know what his numbers are. They're like, he's relatively unknown compared to all the other guys. So it's like, you know, for the last bit going into the games, he's, he's the dark horse, he's the unknown. And, and for me, it's like, I fear the unknown. Like the other guys, I know their strengths, I know their weaknesses, I know where to push the pace on them and where I need to just stay in my own lane. But for Justin, it was like, don't know anything about this kid. Event one of the games. Um, I think that was a very impressive performance for him. I remember going back and watching the footage after the fact and being like, oh, okay, this kid's the real deal. Because, not because of his score or the, but how he paced it. He stayed very consistent, if not sped up during the muscle ups and shoulder overhead, but then it was how he was receiving the shoulder overhead even when he was under fatigue that movement pattern that he had. Um, <clears throat> he was using purely his legs. There was no upper body pressing on it. He was meeting the bar right at its very apex. So he was being super, super efficient with the movement um, and able to speed up. So it's like, oh wow, you, okay, you're a rookie and you're able to pace the row that well and appropriately that you were able to speed up on the rest of the workout. Uh, his muscle ups were super clean. You know, he's he's definitely not a small guy. Uh, he's a little bit bigger than me. And then his efficiency on those shoulder overheads that the first rep looked the exact same as the last rep. And I remember seeing that and thinking, okay, like this kid, this kid's gonna turn some heads. The reoccurring dreams I have are like, I'm like holding someone by the shirt, trying to punch them in the face. You can't punch them. And, and you can't punch hard enough. <laughs> You're like, oh, fuck. And they're just laughing at you. So I'm sure that one means something deep down. Little man. <laughs> can, can you recognize the person who holds on to? No, it's like different random people. Just, the most vivid dream I had recently was that I thought I woke up from a dream that was the last eight years of my life of, yeah, like I woke up and like CrossFit wasn't a thing, the CrossFit games weren't a thing, and I was like, oh man, I thought I had life figured out, like I was good at this thing, I was world champion a bunch of times, People and someone's like, like okay. and the person I'm telling you is like, you're an idiot, and I was like, wait, I have a desk job? No! <laughs> Yeah. So that's what goes through my head at night. <laughs> like to beat people up? Oh yeah. But then like you, like you fly, but then you like can't fly, so you're like trying to fly. It's not working anymore. Just kind of like you can't punch someone, but when like I can't fly anymore. I def I don't dream at all. That's, that's I I'm also though Matt is the type that he'll he'll lay down. He'll be like super tired. He'll lay down and immediately be like, time to figure out life. 
Whereas I'm like last night I had my cup of beam. I'm leaning on the on the counter being like, hey, it's time to go to bed. Look, it just hits me and I'm I'm out. And then as soon as my head hits the pillow, I have zero trouble falling asleep. Like I am just amazing. out. Just trying to learn as much as I can from Matt. I mean, I think uh, obviously he's the best to ever do it. And I think that's for a reason. I think how he trains and mindset and training and like how he goes about each workout, I think that's something that he does different than anybody else. So kind of coming in these four days that I'm here is just to kind of soak that all in. And I think everyone has those couple workouts where they're like, they're gonna, that's gonna stick with them like forever. There's like those grueling workouts and uh, I could tell he was looking forward to kind of putting me through uh, some of those tests this week. The year that we fell off the cargo net? Yeah. As, as soon as my hand slipped, I had been training myself to like, no matter how shitty the situation was, find the silver lining. Yeah. You know, like in a split second, you could have like a whole fucking narrative in your head. Yeah. As soon as my hand slipped in my head, I went, good. I'm going to get to the ground so much faster than Pat. <laughs> and then before I hit the ground, I went, no, you fucking idiot, brace. Like, you're about, yeah. to, you're about to die. And I, I was like, good. I got down so much faster than him. And then he fell, and I was like, son of a bitch. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I was like, yeah. But yeah, in training, like, get in the mentality of, like, the whole point of going to the gym is to get better. And that is the, the space that you get better. So anytime before that, the whole purpose of it is to get to that zone where you're hurting. Like that's where the progress is made. Um, yeah. So it's like, look forward to it. Tell yourself like, this is what I'm chasing. This is why I'm here. This is why I showed up. Don't fucking waste it. This year, our focus has been, okay, let's make sure that the 2021 Justin Medeiros can run circles around last year's version. So, you know, we haven't spent a ton of time looking at like, oh, this guy does that or this athlete does that. It's more like, hey, if we can improve the Justin Medeiros from last year significantly in every facet of competition, then we know that the potential to do well at this year's CrossFit Games is there. And so that's been the focus, that's been the goal. I would take someone that is weaker but has good technique over someone that's snatching 300, 310 inconsistently. Yeah. I, would, I would take the person with good technique every time. Yeah, so I think today if we can work some snatches. I mean, like we went through the clean, so I'm assuming most of the stuff that's happening in the clean is also gonna happen in the snatch. Like you have good technique, but there's just some little, little things in there that we can work on. Yeah. Um, just judging from at the Mac, that 285 snatch, it just looked like it crashed on me a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of work on that. We good? Yeah. Let's get after it. Give me a second, I'm trying to select the appropriate weapon, uh. 
Watch who you stepping. Them snakes all around, you know they connected. Uh. When I was a kid, my grandmama told me I can't go to heaven. So I stopped praying and asking for blessings and started preparing for my Armageddon. Got nothing to lose, I'm all in. Walking the edge, don't fall in. Enough of the lies, don't apologize. I don't understand, are you foreign? This is the place, this is the site. Grab all your people and log in. I'm waiting, don't care how long it's gonna take. Watching and waiting for that first mistake. Don't come up missing. Don't get it twisted. I'm not Rihanna, but boy, you a gunner. You right on my hit list. I'm keeping my distance. Just checking the list. I'm always aware of your current position. I just hold out to the perfect condition. Coming alive. your body will panic because it doesn't know when its next hit of oxygen is coming. Yeah. So same thing with running. I always like exhale. Okay. So like I'm exhaling hard as I strike, pause for the next step, and then inhale, inhale, hard exhale on that strike. So every fourth step, like once a lap, I'll, I'll readjust which foot I'm exhaling on just keep it a little bit symmetrical doesn't make too much of a difference all right but keep as soon as like on the 800 when you know the workout is going to end you can go to one breath every third step but if you ever go to one breath every other step you better have like 10 seconds left in the workout because you're going to fucking panic and gas out so really try to okay. stick to every fourth step and always exhaling on on the strike If you had to rank one over the other, the office or always sunny? Oh, come on. You know. <laughs> you know the answer. <laughs> the I'm on a Brooklyn Nine-Nine kick right now, man. Oh, really? Three episodes every night before bed. Dang. I finish up doing all my busy work, usually by midnight. <laughs> I cuddle it on the couch, got my headphones on, my cup of bean. <laughs> I make it through two, then I doze off during the third. So my attitude going into the 2020 games was just trying to kind of figure out where I was as an athlete. That was my first year qualifying for the games. I won the Filthy 150 in Ireland, and then kind of COVID happened, and we had six, seven months of nothing. Like there was no way of like kind of testing yourself to see where your fitness was, and then obviously the games were going to get canceled and go away, and I kind of had no idea what was going to happen. And stage one of the games was online and I felt like that wasn't a strong suit for me. I like in-person competition and coming out of it in third place and qualifying for the in-person competition with the top five was not something I was expecting at all. So uh, I think I was just trying to kind of figure out where I was as an athlete and walking away from that experience, I was just like, all right, like I know when I give my best effort, like that's enough. Like I can compete with the best of the best and just kind of trying to own that going into the 2021 season is, I can compete with the best of the best and I'm shooting for that top spot.